What will the world be like when the temple is rebuilt? I was, in fact, asked this very question recently. A certain person told me that they had attended a shiur where a certain book, I won't go into the details, they're not very relevant, a certain book that is has become somewhat popular, shall we say, over the last several years, at least here in Israel, written by someone with a background in, in Kabbalah, in uh, related studies. And in this shiur, the person quoted from this book, and I was shown these quotes, to the effect that when the Mikdash, when the temple is rebuilt, there will be no sickness or disease, there will be no thieves or criminals, the world will be totally in a state of peace and tranquility, and the world will just be the most marvelous and ideal place that one could imagine. The purpose of this discussion in this particular book was to clarify for people why we fast on Tisha B'Av. And the point that was being made was that in order to mourn for something, in order to feel that something is missing in our lives, we must understand what exactly it is that's missing. We cannot mourn and bewail that which we do not understand or that which we do not feel is lacking. So this book went on to describe how when the Mikdash is rebuilt, there will be tahiyatha methim, the, the reviving and the rising of the dead, and uh, several other things of this type were described there. And this person asked me, what did I think about these statements, about these claims? I had to clarify my position to this person, and I said as follows. The author of these words, of these sentences, on all those who make such claims, are conflating First of all, the concept of the Mikdash with other concepts which in their mind are, are all wrapped up together into one package. In other words, you have the Mikdash, the temple, you have Tehiyat HaMithim, the uh, revival, the rising of the dead. You have uh, Yemuth HaMashiach, the days of the Messiah. All these concepts for some people, and I would be quite willing to admit that we're talking about many people, both Jews and Gentiles, by the way, all these ideas are somehow understood to be part and parcel of a, of a certain reality, which in broad terms they would refer to as Yemotha Mashiach, the days of the Messiah when the Messiah comes. And these same people, almost without exception, believe that the, the Mikdash will fall from heaven, that it will not be built by human effort, that the Jewish people will not be the ones to rebuild the Mikdash, the temple, on Harabait, on, on the Temple Mount, where the first and the second Mikdashim stood, but rather, as does appear, it is true, as does appear in certain sources, for example, Rashi makes this statement explicitly in two places in his Perusha on the Talmud Bavli, on the Talmud, Rashi states that the Mikdash, the future temple, will fall from heaven, in other words, will descend from heaven, complete and built and and uh, as it were, ready to go uh, without any 
human agency. And it is true that there have been, have always been apparently, going back to almost time immemorial, there have been Jews who have viewed and understood the concept of Aharitha Yamim, the end of days, mentioned in the Nevi'im and the Prophets in that fashion. Now it goes without saying that if you believe in a time of the Messiah, Yemoth HaMashiach, where a huge edifice, complex, descends from heaven, namely the Temple. If you believe that such a thing will take place, well then you can certainly, as part of such a belief system, you can certainly accept and assume that when this happens, many other miraculous things will happen and the world as we know it uh, will essentially cease to be. In other words, a new age will be ushered in, a new type of world, a new form of existence for human beings, for the Jewish people and for all people will, will uh, begin to be felt here on earth and the normal modalities of human existence will, will no longer apply and therefore you can readily believe and assume that there will no, be no more disease and there will be no uh, thieves and criminals etc etc. All these ideas are part of a, a view, a world view which is an assumption because it is not written in any source or any authoritative source that one must accept if one is a Torah Jew, it does not appear in any Torah source that the Temple will in fact fall from heaven. Nor does it state in any reliable source that when the Mikdash is rebuilt, when it or reappears according to, even according to those who believe that it reappears miraculously, it does not state anywhere that at that time there will be no more disease, that there will be no more thieves, and uh, the world will be the most, uh, uh, the most idyllic place that one could imagine. These are not statements that, that exist, rather these are assumptions that do fit that kind of understanding, that kind of portrait of, of a future reality. If one assumes that we're talking about uh, that type of reality, which is of course entirely different and uh, foreign to everything that we have we have experienced uh, here on Earth, that human beings have seen up to this point, it must, however, be made clear that this is not the only position in the Torah world, in the Jewish world, never has been. And I would go further and I would say that this is not an authoritative and reasonable position based on all the sources before us, based on the statements that we find in the Tanakh, in the Nevi'im and in Chazal. Here we shall quote from Rambam. Rambam most certainly did not understand these concepts and uh, that which will be when the Mikdash is rebuilt. Rambam most certainly did not understand these matters in such a fashion. In Rambam's commentary on the Mishnah, his Perush on the Mishnah, the 10th chapter of Masechet Sanhedrin, Rambam writes as follows. I will read and translate. Avad Yemot HaMashiach Hu Zeman Shebo Tahzor HaMalchut L'Yisrael The period of time known as Yemot HaMashiach, the days of the Messiah, says Rambam, is a time, here Rambam is, to, is about to define for us that period of time, what we mean when we say Yemot HaMashiach. 
He says, first and foremost, it refers to a time when the Jewish people will reside in their land under their own independent rule. We are the ruler of Israel. They will, of course, be in their land. They will no longer be dispersed across the globe. We are also a Melech, Haomed, Makom, Malchutho, Sion. And the, the king, the leader of the Jewish people, the Rambam naturally uses the term Melech, king. That is, is, a, uh, some, that is a point that, that can be debated. Not, not all of uh, the Chachamim, not, and not the necessarily the simple understanding of the, the uh, Pesukim and the Tanakh, the verses in Sefer Devarim, the book of Deuteronomy, or in Sefer Shemuel, the book of Samuel, not necessarily is, is that the, the, the simple plain meaning of, of those verses that speak about uh, a Jewish form of governance. However, Rambam's position is that a monarchy is, a hereditary monarchy one might add, is the norm and is in fact uh, the commanded form of, of uh, government for the Jewish people. Rambam says the king of the Jewish people will, his, his uh, throne, his palace, his place of residence, the center of, of his uh, rule will be in Sion, which is Yerushalayim. With Gader Shemo, we are Gia Lekiswe that he, he will become known, famous throughout the world. Yoser Urgadol al Mechet Shalomo. He will be more well known and thought of than was Melech Shalomo, King Solomon, in his time. We Chrethu Imo Amim Barith Shalom. And the nations of the world will, at some point at least, it's not necessarily something that happens immediately, as Rambam himself writes elsewhere, but nations of the world, all nations or many nations of the world will seek to be his allies and be at peace with him. Rambam continues and he writes, Wolo ishtane ba masiyut shum davar mi kafishuhu ata. However, nothing in the world as we know it will change from the normal way of the natural created world as we are familiar with it, none of this will change. Zulati Shetehe Hamalchut Li Israel, except for the fact that in the time of the exile, during the long exile of the Jewish people from their land, they are not independent and they are therefore also scattered and they are also at the mercy of their of their enemies and they have many enemies. When when this time of Yemoth HaMashiach comes about, the Jews will be in the, their land. Again, this doesn't mean that every single Jew on the planet will be in Eretz Yisrael. If all Jews can, and most do, but some Jews insist on not returning to Eretz Yisrael, that is not uh, our problem, so to speak. It is very sad. It would be very tragic. But uh, it is not as if... An, one or two individuals or even half a million individuals who choose to remain wherever they happen to be on earth rather than returning to their homeland and joining the Jewish people at this time uh, such such people will not prevent the unfolding of of history as planned by Hashem that should be clear and this is what the Chachamim stated explicitly. And Ben Ha'olam Hazah, Limoth HaMashiach, the only difference between the current situation, this was said by Hazal 1700 odd years ago, 1800 years ago, the only difference between that situation and the future time of the Mashiach is Sheibud Malchuyot Bilivad. In other words, that the Jewish people will be independent and sovereign. Of course, it goes without saying that we are talking about a Jewish state, a Jewish monarchy in Eretz Yisrael based on the concepts and values and uh, instructions of the Torah. Not talk, we are not talking about a, a Jewish state in name only. 
this is part of course of the the overall picture and this is the backdrop for Yemot HaMashiach. One cannot imagine Yemot HaMashiach in a situation where the country is run and administered by people and according to a, a system of law which stands in contradiction to the Torah. And the place of the Mikdash in this picture, this time, this future time, is that it is a natural part of, of that reality. It is one of the major components of that reality. Without the Mikdash at the center of Yerushalayim, at the center of the Mashiach's kingdom and uh, area of rule, sovereign Jewish rule, without that, that, that could, it could not be considered Yimoth HaMashiach. And therefore we find in the 11th chapter of Yilchoth Malachim or Milhamoth, at the end of Rambam's Mishneh Torah, at the very beginning of the chapter, we read, HaMelech HaMashiach Athid La'amod Ulahazir Malchut Beth Dawid Liyoshna. The future Mashiach, Messiah, will be a leader of the Jewish people, a leader in the down to earth political sense. He is not necessarily. Uh, a great scholar or the greatest scholar of his generation that is not one of his is not a, not a requirement is not part of the job description what uh, what is necessary is that he leads the Jewish people and runs the Jewish people's affairs in accordance with the Torah and in his day there will therefore be a sovereign Jewish state and Rambam goes on to write he will return the situation. The situation will be as it was in the time of David HaMelech in the sense that there will be full independence and the Jewish people will be strong, powerful, and successful. HaMem Shalah HaRishonah, that's what Ramah means to say, as it was in the time of David HaMelech. Uvanem Mikdash, and in his day the Mikdash will be rebuilt. By the way, it does not mean to say that it must be built by the Melech HaMashiach, as some people misunderstand. This is not true. Here the Rambam is not describing how the Mikdash must be built or at what point in history it must be built. And we find in the Tamud Yerushalmi in, in uh, Masechet Ma'asir Sheni explicitly that it is possible that the Mikdash, in fact the Yerushalmi suggests that this is how it will be, that the Mikdash will be rebuilt before the appearance of and the establishment of the the Jewish commonwealth headed by this Melech HaMashiach, this uh, special figure. In other words, these things don't have to go together. In other, it, it is true that the at the time of the Melech HaMashiach to know, to be certain that this is the person that was referred to by the Nevi'im, there has to be a Mikdash, yes. But it's possible to have a Mikdash without yet having achieved Yimot HaMashiach. This has to be understood as well. And in his day, the Jews, the remaining Jews scattered around the world will return. And all aspects of the Torah will be reinstituted and will be implemented. Rambam goes on to write in Halakha Gimel, Al ya'ale al da'atukha. Do not imagine for a moment. Shamelech hamashiach sarich la'asoth othothu mofethim. That it is expected of, or it will be demanded of, this person, the Melech hamashiach, this leader of the Jewish people, in order for him to qualify, so to speak, that he must perform miracles. Umehadesh devarim ba'olam. That he should be able to perform and do things that have not been seen before, that are not normally the way of the world. Or that he should uh, revive the dead, or that in his time the dead will be revived somehow. Or similar notions as the foolish state and expect. So says Rambam. Those are not my words, those are the words of the Rambam. It is true that in certain versions, certain editions of the Rambam, some of these words were were em, uh, omitted or 
or um, replaced by other terms, but this is the correct, uncensored, precise text of the Rambam, which appears in all of the manuscripts, and we have many, many manuscripts of Rambam's Mishneh Torah, some of them uh, as old as uh, 600 and 700 years old. And also, uh, this is how it appears in all the early printings of the Rambam. It was only in later printings that some of these things were uh, deliberately censored, or possibly in some cases uh, without malice or forethought, so simply uh, misprinted. And Rambam goes on to say, we know this to be the case because Rabbi Akiva was of the opinion that the leader of the Jewish people at that time, who was leading the revolt against the Romans, Shimon ben Koziba HaMelech, known also as Bar Kochava, Rabbi Akiva said of him that he was the Melech HaMashiach, and this person, Bar Kochava, was not a miracle worker. He was a national leader, he was apparently charismatic, he was apparently a great military leader, and he was very successful for a time, and many people thought, including Rabbi Akiva, one must assume that he was not alone. After all, the Jewish people, by and large, saw him uh, as their leader and followed him. Uh, Rabbi Akiva said, this person, it seems to me, is the Melech HaMashiach. Rabbi Akiva expected things to turn out in that way at that time. And this is not, this was not unreasonable, says the Roman, to assume such a thing. Because it is not necessary that he do more than this person did, except for the fact that in the end he was not successful and, the, and he eventually he was uh, defeated by and also killed by the Romans eventually. But had things worked out differently, had the result been the opposite, then it would have been entirely reasonable to say this is the Melech HaMashiach, even if in his day uh, the Jews from around the world, what had been till that point, shall we say, the Roman Empire, had the Roman Empire collapsed at that time, or at least uh, retreated from Eretz Yisrael and the environs, and Jews were able to return from various countries uh, around uh, Eretz Yisrael, around the Mediterranean, and have the Jewish people therefore been able to reestablish, reconstitute their independent existence based on the Torah, with of course the Mikdash at their center, then that would have been Yemot HaMashiach. That is not how things played out, but that was certainly a possibility. So says Rambam. And therefore we see, if Rabbi Akiva thought that he could have been the Mashiach, then clearly the Mashiach does not have to be some kind of supernatural miracle worker. And Rambam continues and says in Halakha Dalad, Therefore he says, you have to understand that this is, this is the basic blueprint for future Jewish history based on what we find in the Tanakh, in the Prophets, in the Nevi'im, and also already mentioned or hinted at in the Torah, that there will come a time when at least a critical mass of the Jewish people will return to Eretz Yisrael, and they will establish an appoint, they will establish their own independent existence as a nation, and they will appoint at, at their head a king or a leader, and this person will be a descendant of uh, David HaMelech, King David, and he will be a Torah Jew, as was his, his ancestor, David HaMelech. He will accept the Torah as, as we know it, as we have received it. And he will see to it that the Jewish people live according to the Torah. And he will also fight the wars of the Jewish people against their enemies and be successful. Such a person, we can begin to assume, is the Mashiach, is the person referred to in the Nevi'im as the future leader of the Jewish people, when the Jewish people will uh, return to Eretz Yisrael and once again uh, find greatness and success and closeness to Hashem. In other words, according to the Rambam, the Mashiach is not someone who falls from heaven, neither he nor the Mikdash fall from heaven. And in fact, you cannot know at the outset if, if he is this Melech HaMashiach that you hope for or not. It is only in retrospect, 
having seen what eventually takes place, what the historical reality is, what, what they become before your own eyes. If this Jewish leader is successful in re-establishing independent, sovereign Jewish presence in Eretz Yisrael, in their own land, under their own rule, according to the Torah, this person, we can begin to assume, is the Melech HaMashiach. And if he continues, Im Asa wehisliah, wanisah kol ha'umoth shesevivo, if this leader of the Jewish people is successful in these actions, and he defeats the enemies of the Jewish people, uvanam mikdash bim komo, and he built the mikdash in its place on Harabaith, as we said before, he doesn't have to build it if it's already built, if it happens to be the case, as the Ushami states, that the Mikdash could be built before the Melech HaMashiach, then he doesn't have to build it. But there will be such a reality in his time. That, that is certainly true. Israel, And he will ingather Jews from around the world. Then we can be quite certain that this is the Melech HaMashiach. Rambam further goes on to say, at the beginning of the next chapter, the very last chapter of Mishneh Torah, chapter 12. He writes as follows, Al ya'alel al halev, do not imagine, shabimot ha-mashiach yivtal davar v'min ha-goshel olam, that something fundamental will change in the world as we know it. Or yesh sham hidush b'ma'asev rishith, that the order of, of things, the natural order of the world will somehow be upset or changed. Rather, no, the world continues The world continues as we know it. In other words, there will be a need to make to earn a living. There will still be disease in the world. That which it says in Yeshayahu, in the prophet Yeshayahu, im keves namer im gadir bas, which speaks about the, the uh, wolf and the lamb living in peace, Rambam explains this is a mashal, this is a, a way of explaining the following, that this, at this time, Rambam writes, Shiyu Yisrael Yoshavim Lavetach, Am Yisrael will live in, in peace in its land, Imri Sh'eh HaOlam, HaMashulim Bezaev Namir, that there will be nations who will, have, in the past, have been evil, but then will either be defeated by the Jewish leader or will come to terms with the Jewish people, so the Jewish people will live in tranquility. And at that time we can also assume we and people, all people will realize the truth about Hashem and the Torah, that, is, that which is the true religion which uplifts and edifies and guides mankind to its true destiny. These are the kinds of things that we can expect and believe in with regards to Imot HaMashiach and the Mikdash. So if a person asks, why do we fast on Tisha B'Av? The answer is not because we look forward to a world without a disease, where people will not have to make a living, where the world as we know it ceases to exist essentially, and a, a new form of existence, which is in, in essence supernatural, uh, takes over. It is not for that reason. It is in order for the Jewish people to achieve their destiny, their purpose on this earth, to bring about a situation here on earth where all peoples will begin to see the light of Hashem, of the Torah, and the Jewish people will be the true teachers and leaders of mankind, as Hashem intended, as is mentioned in, in the Nevi'im, that we were all along intended to be an orgoyim, a light unto the nations, and of course, first and foremost, to ourselves. We can only be a light unto others once we understand how and what we are supposed to do, and having done that, and having provided that kind of example, can we then go on to be the Or Goyim that Hashem intended for His people?
The production of these videos and maintaining this channel demands much time and money. If you enjoyed this video, please show your appreciation and support. To make a donation, please go to www.machonshilo.org and press the PayPal button which appears on the upper right hand side of the home page. To sponsor a video or purchase Birkon Nusach Eretz Israel, please write us at office at machonshilo.org.